Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation that contains z, z bar and the absolute value of z or the modulus. So for these kinds of equations we have a general method that we're going to use but first of all notice that since we're dividing by absolute value of z, z cannot be zero because if z is equal to zero that implies absolute value of z equals zero which is impossible in this case. So under those conditions, let's go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us z equals the absolute value of z multiplied by z bar plus i. Just remember that z bar is the complex conjugate of z, which is when multiplied by z and added to z gives us a real number. Okay, that's how the conjugate can be defined. And now we're going to use our magic formula. And that formula is called z equals a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel, right? Cool. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. We're going to get a plus bi equals, the absolute value by definition is the square root of a squared plus b squared. z bar is going to be a minus bi. Now let's go ahead and combine the imaginary parts and write it as 1 minus b multiply by i because we're going to get i minus bi which is the same as this okay now from here we have a single equation and two variables right it kind of looks unsolvable but these are, these are complex numbers so it's solvable we can actually come up with a system of equations from a single equation that's because of the power of complex numbers they have two components in other words so let's go ahead and compare the real parts and compare the imaginary parts separately the real part on the left is a, and on the right is just a times the square root of a squared plus b squared. As you know, this implies two things, either a is equal to 0, or the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Now, how did I get that quickly, right? Well, you could subtract this from both sides, if you didn't see what I did, then factor out an a, and by setting each factor equal to 0, you will get the exact same thing. Make sense? So those are the two results that we're getting. We're going to be looking at each one. But let's go ahead and look at the imaginary parts. The imaginary part here is B. Here, this times this is going to be the imaginary part. So B is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared multiplied by 1 minus B. Remember, the imaginary part does not contain I itself. It only contains the coefficients. So this is B, and this is equation kind of looks a little complicated yes it contains some b and we can factor it but there's also other things so let's hold on to this for now because we're going to use it later but let's look at the results from the first equation first of all i got two results this is the one this is the two. First result is a equals zero which is fairly simple let's go ahead and replace a with zero if a is equal to zero we get b equals square root of b squared times one minus b since this equation only contains b, we should be able to solve it, right? I mean, you can square both sides, but that's not necessary. What is the square root of b squared? Remember, b is a real number. So the square root of b is absolute value of b. And then, depending on whether b is positive or negative, we're going to get two results. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one. If b is positive, then we get b equals b times 1 minus b. Let's go ahead and distribute and turn this into a quadratic equation. We're going to get b minus b squared bring the b squared over here, and the b is going to cancel out, so we're going to get b squared equals 0, right? Which means b is equal to 0. So this equation is only going to work for b equals 0. What happens if b is equal to 1? If b is equal to 1, then you get 0b equals b, or 0 equals b, which is b equals 0. Same thing, right? It doesn't matter. So you only get one solution, and that is b equals 0. But 0 does not... Uh, satisfy the requirements because we said if b is equal to if b is greater than zero this is going to happen what happens if b is less than zero so we can't take this if b is less than zero then we're going to get b equals negative b times one minus b or you can call it b equals negative b plus b squared and then we can put everything on the same side b squared minus 2b equals zero 2b or not 2b yay and then b times b minus 2 equals zero from here we get b equals zero or b equals two but none of them are negative, so they're not going to work either. So we kind of have to look at 
b equals zero separately because what happens is if b is equal to zero this equation will be satisfied therefore if a is equal to zero then b is equal to zero is going to work right it should be okay we can definitely check it with the original one well wait a minute a and B cannot be zero at the same time. Because remember what we said about Z, Z cannot be zero. Therefore, A and B cannot be zero at the same time. Uh-oh, that's not good. So we have to abandon these values. So A equals zero, B equals zero is not gonna work. So we have to use another case, which is what? Number two. If square root of A squared plus B squared is one, and we have this equation, let's go ahead and replace square root of A squared plus B squared with one, that gives us b equals 1 minus b, which is 2b, or not 2b again, not intentional, and from here b equals 1 half. But you don't stop here because you just found b, now you got to find a. What is a though? Well, we do know that the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 1, so if a, b is equal to 1 half, you're going to get a squared plus 1 fourth is 1, a squared is 3 fourths, and from here you're going to get a equals plus minus root 3 over 2. Does that look familiar? If you are familiar with trigonometry, sine, cosine, these values should look familiar to you. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and write the results, summarize, and then we're going to be looking at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem successfully. What do you think? Make a guess. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem? Yes or no? And then we'll check the result in a little bit. But let's go ahead and write the solutions first. So z sub 1 can be root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And z sub 2 can be root 3 over 2 with a negative sign, which is negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. So imaginary parts are the same, and the real parts are different. Okay? They are uh, negated. Now, let's go ahead and do something before we look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. I know you're kind of impatient about it, but... Let's go ahead and do something. Uh, we don't have to do, do this for both, but let's go ahead and check our work. Do you think these solutions are going to work? And let me just test one of them, because the other is probably going to work, right? So if z is this, then I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. This is z divided by absolute value of z. Notice that the absolute value of z is 1, right? Because, come on, these are cosine and sine values of an angle, right? You know that, right? Cosine was it 60? Oh, no, this is cosine 30. So in other words, this is actually cosine pi over 6, and this is sine pi over 6. So there, sum of squares is going to be 1. And then, this, is this equal to root 3 over 2, the conjugate of z, which is this one, plus i? And the answer is yes. And of course, if you try with the other one, the signs are just going to alternate, which will give you the right answer one more time. And let's go ahead and look at the results. And Wolfram Alpha gives us, ta-da, the correct solutions. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.